Hello everyone, I'm Wendy Sawyer and my tech talk is going to be on telenursing in the intensive care unit and how we are transforming practices and broadening our reach so we can meet the national demands for innovative ways to care for our critically ill patient population. According to the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, telehealth nursing is defined as the practice of nursing over distance using telecommunication technology. Telehealth nursing, simply called telenursing, has traditionally been practiced in homes, clinics, prisons, and hospitals with most of the common applications that everyone is aware of being telephone triage, remote monitoring, and home care. Telenursing has extended beyond those applications I just mentioned and has now become a common practice in intensive care units or ICUs. So much so that in August of 2010, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses convened a task force to delineate the guidelines that pertains to the practice of tele-ICU nursing. They define tele-ICUs as networks of audiovisual communication and computer systems that link critical care physicians or intensivists and nurses to intensive care units in other remote hospitals. So what does a tele-ICU look like? When you picture an ICU, I'm sure that you envision a hectic environment with hundreds of electronic tracings on screens, with patients hooked up to a bunch of equipment, alarms constantly going off, phones ringing, and people in scrubs running around and being very busy. You're not picturing people calmly sitting in front of monitors reviewing displays in a command center or as one of the telenurses referred to as air traffic control for nursing as depicted in that bottom frame. Tele-ICUs came about as a result of the rapidly exploding telemedicine approach to care. We have to look for creative and cost-effective ways to provide care. Our population is aging and is of a higher acuity with an increasing demand for critical care assets. Not to mention that there are shortage of intensivists and nurses. There is a demand from outside to safeguard our patients and the scrutiny of the quality indicators by internal and external agencies. All of these factors are shaping the landscape of healthcare delivery around the globe. The tele-ICU is considered a second set of eyes that provides additional clinical surveillance and support. By communicating with the on-site team, the tele-ICU can support care without the many distractions found at the bedside. The technology platform for tele-ICUs include various vendor-specific components of hardware and software and affects both the on-site and the tele-ICU teams. One of the essential components, obviously, in any tele-ICU is the high-fidelity video cameras and speakers located in the patient's room. This AV equipment provides the eyes and the ears for the tele-team. The camera has zoom and pan capabilities to allow the practitioner to assess clinical indicators of status, such as pupil size, skin color, even mental acuity, and to directly visualize the settings on IV pumps, ventilators, and other equipment within the room. There's two-way audio and video capabilities, which allow for bi-directional communication with the on-site staff, the patient, and even the family. Often located remotely from the physical ICU, the tele-ICU center is frequently a wide open room with a workstation for every 30 to 40 patients. 
Each of those workstations usually consists of five to seven monitor screens displaying the patient information and the monitored patient. From here, the telenurse can monitor vital signs and any bedside data, including real-time waveforms. Tele-ICU software provides the use of automated surveillance tools to assist the remote team in the identification and prompt response to changes in the patient's condition. These alerts use sophisticated rules to evaluate the bedside monitor, labs, medications, and charted data. The telenurse can also view any radiographic images that's pertinent to the care of the patient. If you turn your attention to the bottom left screen, the data displayed in red alerts the telenurse to critical values that must be addressed. The data highlighted in yellow is a caution to the telenurse that there are some pending concerns. In order to assess the patient's status, the tele team need to have access to all relevant patient information including the progress notes, nurses notes, flow sheets, et cetera. So the clinical information from the electronic medical record is made available for the tele team as well. And all of the ICU beds that make up the tele program are linked together through networks and the data is encrypted for security purposes. It's important for me to mention that the tele team is not always watching and the cameras are not always on. Depending on the program design, the typical tele nurse can monitor care for up to 40 ICU patients. The alert button located in the room allows the on-site staff in the ICU to request the on-camera presence of the tele nurse at any time. An example of this is let's say the on-site nurse caring for a patient has to be called away for an extended period of time, maybe to admit a patient or transfer a patient. She can use the alert button to bring the tele nurse to the bedside via the camera to stay with the patient while she goes down the hall to take care of the other patient. The typical tele-ICU operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and is staffed with intensivists, registered nurses, and support staff. The intensivists are board certified in critical care and are privileged and credentialed in every participating hospital. This physician provides oversight and intervention as appropriate for patient safety or as requested by the attending physician. A few programs employ a full-time physician, but most have rotation schedules. The tele-RN, sometimes referred to as an ERN, is an experienced RN with at least five years of recent adult critical care experience. Certification as a critical care nurse, at minimum, a bachelor's degree in nursing, and because of the nature of the duties, must be able to demonstrate excellent leadership and communication skills. The staffing in tele-ICUs reflect the facts that they are not responsible for the daily care and management of the patients they observe. So the mean ratio is about 60 to 125 patients to one tele-intensivist, 30 to 40 patients to one tele-RN, and 50 to 125 patients to one clerical assistant. The acute nature of ICU patients' healthcare needs and the high cost associated with critically ill patients make survival rates and cost savings about the most desirable outcomes measured. Tele-ICU offers expert, evidence-based, cutting-edge services to the monitoring and treatment of critically ill patients. Consequently, early adopters of this technology reported a decrease in mortality rates, a decrease in length of stay in the ICU, a decrease in number of cardiac arrests, and an increased compliance with evidence-based practices.
start in a tele ICU does not come without some costs. The, it's not cheap. The adoption of tele ICU requires a substantial upfront expenditure with ongoing costs for operation and maintenance. These costs sometimes can impede the adoption of this technology. The cost of tele ICU varies depending on the setting, hardware, software training, and compatibility with other systems. One study reported a cost of more than $2 million to set up a command center and its components. In general, two to five million is the estimated cost to set up a s command center and install a tele-ICU system with annual operating costs ranging from 600,000 to 1.5 million. On the savings side, however, one study found that a 10% reduction in ICU length and stay can result in a positive um, 2.5 million dollar cost savings. Now this picture was taken on my recent visit to Hawaii and as a point of interest Tripler Army Medical Center in Hawaii offers tele-intensivist services to ICUs in Japan, Guam, and Korea and staff in those ICUs can reach out to a tele-intensivist at Tripler for consultation on patient management. So in conclusion, tele-ICUs are affecting ICU patient care and clinicians in 28 states. More than 40 healthcare systems and more than 200 hospitals. Safety, cost avoidance, and patients' outcomes are being improved in our health system by this innovation. So as technology becomes more integrated in patient care, the significance of tele-ICUs and tele-nursing will most likely become more apparent. Tele-ICU nursing has the potential to add to the tools already available to the critical care team. So if you'd like to do some additional reading at your leisure, here are the references. I hope you enjoyed my tech talk. It's been a pleasure. Aloha.